Consultancy, training and advice from The IT Service. www.theitservice.co.uk Hello. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at what is, for my money, one of Excel's best features, pivot tables. If you've never used pivot tables before then you're in for a treat. There's nothing that touches them for the way they analyze your data and can reveal truths about your business that you had no idea about. In front of us we see here uh, a spreadsheet that I've set up with some data extracted from a database and we have a whole bunch of data regarding different companies which are our customers and orders that they've placed with us over a period of a couple of years. You can see that the data is now somewhat dated. The data comes from 94, 95 and 96 uh, but that doesn't matter as far as we're concerned. So we have a whole bunch of columns. The company name here, I say our customer, their location, city and country and then each of the orders that they've placed and each order has an order ID, the date of the order, the unit price of each item and the quantity they ordered and I've added in a column here for the line value, the line value being the total so 45 times 1440, what it was they ordered and who the supplier was of, of that product. In this spreadsheet we can see that we've had a whole bunch of orders. If I scroll down, if I go to the bottom, there we go, 2156, 2155 if you take out the headings, orders, and so I can see that yet yeah, we've done quite a lot of trade. But I've no idea whether over time the trade was getting better or worse, which products were selling well, which products were never being ordered, which customers were my best customers, and which customers somehow I've ended up with on the system who've only ever placed three pounds worth, or in this case three dollars worth of business with us. Our pivot table can answer all those questions and many more and can do so in a way which is dynamic, easy to use and very very immediate and visual. It's worth noting incidentally that each of these orders can be repeated several times. If I just sort here by the order ID, I'll click in that column there and then go to sort and filter sort smallest to largest, you can see that the same order ID exists several times. That's because a single order might have a number of products on it. So for each uh, line of the order we've got uh, the price, the quantity, what it was and the value. So in fact this order here, 10248 with these three lines, had a total value, if I look down here, of 440, um, whereas it might not be so obvious there for uh, looking at individual rows. Also note that just as a quirk of the formatting of this data that the individual unit price is being shown here as dollars, the line value is being shown as pounds. So I'm just going to tweak that and make it look like the whole thing is in pounds. So there we go, let's just set that to uh, the currency symbol there of pounds. So, how do I get to pivot tables? This tutorial is using Excel 2007. Excel 2007 is rather different to earlier versions, both in the way we navigate to things using the ribbon, but also in how we use the tools once we get to them. So to give us a pivot table, I go to the Insert tab on the ribbon, and here we have Pivot Table. If you're using Excel 2003, then Pivot Table is under the Data menu. Inserting a pivot table is as simple as selecting a pivot table from the drop-down. I can just click on the button if that's what I want. Pivot charts are great as well. We'll look at those in another tutorial. But they uh, are usually easier to base on a table. Once you've got the data in a table, then the chart makes more sense, I tend to find. So I'm simply going to select pivot table. And we can see here that it's launched a pivot table wizard. And there's only the one dialog box now. There used to be three or four. This dialog box... I'll just move it into the screen there so you can see it. This dialog box has just a couple of sections. At the top, where's the data coming from? Is it in an existing table or range within Excel? Or am I going to get it from an external source? And secondly, where am I going to put the data? Do I want it on a new worksheet or existing worksheet? Tends to be that I would use a new worksheet because pivot tables can be quite complex. But if I had several pivot tables and I wanted to compare data across several bits of analysis, then putting it in an existing worksheet next to an existing pivot table would also be an option. In our case, though, I'm going to select New Worksheet and click OK. So there's my pivot table. Now, pivot tables really don't look anything special until we start adding data. And in fact, one of the tips I would give you is, when you're planning a pivot table, just have a rough idea of what you're after. It need only be sort of back of an envelope type stuff. Let me just use a separate sheet here to, to show you what I mean. 
I would like to do some analysis that will show me perhaps across the top here if I just color code it in that area there I would like to know about let's say each of my companies oops there we go uh, so we'll have a list of each of the companies that I do business with and I want to know uh, how much business they've done with us so perhaps down the left here uh, I'll break that into sort of month by month business uh, history so on the left there I'll color that differently there we go I'd like a sort of monthly analysis so month uh, monthly and yearly analysis so that's the sort of structure of my pivot table and obviously in the middle um, I'm just after knowing how much business they've done so I'll make that pale green sort of um, total business by company per month. That's the sort of thing I'm after. Again, really a piece of paper and a pencil is all you need for this. That's almost easier than using uh, Excel for that. But that's the sort of thing I'm after. So going back here to my pivot table, again if you've been used to Excel 2003 and earlier versions then you can simply drag fields from over here and drop them into the pivot table. That's changed slightly. Uh, and now we have the various areas here at the bottom right that we use to specify where we want to put fields and we add them by dragging them from here at the top down to the bottom areas below. So I wanted to put the company names across the top of my pivot table so I take the company name field and I simply add it to well I wanted to provide my column labels so I drag it to there I've got more than one way of doing this um, but you can see now that in the background here this pivot table has added a column for each of my companies and that's exactly what I said I wanted but I said I wanted to see the months and the years at the left so the months and the years well that's of the order date uh, so I'll show you a different way if I choose order date I can click on the arrow here and specify which ones I want I want to see all of them and then I can tick that and you can see it's gone directly into the order date area at the bottom so now I've got companies across the top and order dates along the left here. That's not quite what I said I wanted. I don't really want a day-by-day -day analysis of my orders. Um, I wanted a, a sort of monthly summary. We'll come back to that. Lastly, I wanted to know the total values of the orders that each company had spent per month. Um, the total value here is in the line value, so I'm going to drag that into the values area here at the bottom. Hmm. it appears that we've got no data. Well, all that's actually telling us is that this company here, for example, Alfred's Futter Kista, hasn't spent anything in the period that we can see. Anna Trujillo, the uh, company, the second company along, also not spent anything in here. But if we simply drag across to the right a bit, there we go, there's a customer who spent some money in whatever period or whatever date this was, and keep going there's a few more dotted around and this illustrates nicely really why we didn't want a day-by-day -day analysis we wanted a grouped by month by year analysis so in order to do that what I'm going to do is simply right click anywhere over here in this column area here and specify that I want to group that when I say I want to group it it'll ask how do we want to group it and being quite smart Excel's figured out this is a date and therefore I might want to group it by month that's true, but that's not the whole picture. I don't just want by month, I want by month and by year. Otherwise I'll be being told this is the total for August and I won't know in this case whether it's August 94, 95 or 96. So by month and by year, and now when I click OK, there we go, we get a much nicer picture. 94, August, September, October, November, December, 95, begins at January and so on. And here we're beginning to get totals there and I can see that this company, Alfred's Foot Orchestra, if I just make that a bit wider, 1086 in September 95, 1208 in November 95, 851 in February 96, and so on. And the total spend of £4,596.20. So we're beginning to get more what we're after. Now, in fact, this is still, you know, got quite a lot of empty space here. It's better than it was. You can see we're getting a lot more data. But I can choose, as the little minus signs here imply, I can choose to collapse these down and just get a kind of year-by-year -year total, if that's perhaps more useful to me. There we go, year-by-year -year total for each of our companies, as I scroll across to the right. Or it might be that I'm now thinking, well, actually, 
you know, I've got sort of a hundred companies just under, it might be useful to see them down the left and the years and months across the top. Maybe that would make it easier to see. And it's very, very simple to adjust this. The reason these things are called pivot tables is that we can simply pivot the data around. So using this area here on the right, I'm just going to give myself a little bit more space over here. I'm going to take the company name and instead of it being column labels, I want it now to become row labels. So I'll put it there. Then I want to take the years and the months up to where the company name was. And now you can see I've got the company names down here on the left and I've got years across the top. And if I choose to, I can expand the years into their individual months. And for my money, eh, that works a little bit better. I've got a grand total column as well. It does strike me that what's this 403.2? That's actually £403.20. So although we know this is money, this is currency information, it's not showing us that. And it would be perhaps nice if Excel could be persuaded to format things in the way we would like. Once again, very, very simple. You just right-click anywhere in the data here, and then this a shortcut menu that we've got. We can specify the field settings. There we go. We can see over here that at the moment it's adding up, which is exactly what we want. We could get a total number of order values or the average value of the order, that sort of thing. And down at the bottom left, number format allows us to specify we would like to change this to currency with two decimal places, like so. And now we have a much more uh, appropriate output to what we're after. If I just close this panel on the right for a second, we get a much better idea of what we're doing. OK, that's a basic introduction to pivot tables in Excel 2007. In the next pivot table tutorial, we'll look at some of the other things that we can do to perhaps improve our analysis uh, and to make it a little bit more dynamic in terms of adding in things like the countries and breaking things down by region uh, and adding a sort of drill down effect as well. But hopefully that gave you, a, uh, gave you a, a head start on just creating a simple pivot table and being able to add in fields and pivot them. Thanks for listening.